Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Lauren Bell. I'm Director of Outreach and Communications for the ASPIC Co-op Market in Maynard, Massachusetts. Uh, and um, I want to introduce myself to you a little bit, uh, let you know a little bit about uh, how I came to the co-op and what we've been doing over the past four years. Um, but first, before I forget, in case I don't address any of the questions that you might have because this is a recorded uh, presentation, uh, you can always reach out to me uh, at any time. My email is Lorne, L-O-R-N-E, at aspitmarket.coop. That's L-O-R-N-E at aspitmarket.coop. Uh, so I just want to get that out of the way and um, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is We Own It. We funded a new lens for messaging the capital campaign to owners. And uh, just give you a sense of our co-op and, and our kind of journey to where we are now. Uh, we've been around for about eight years. Uh, we are back on the site search after our second uh, site uh, fell through uh, last fall. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we are stronger and more confident and optimistic than ever. Uh, we have uh, several prospects that we're working on and uh, we uh, managed to raise $1.5 million out of our uh, $2 million capital campaign goal last fall uh, in the height of the pandemic. Um, so we were uh, psyched to get to 75% uh, of our goal and, and confident that we'll be able to push it over the top. Uh, when we secure our uh, forever home, our new uh, site. Um, I'm going to cover some of the success of that co-op that actually, of that uh, campaign rather, that happened uh, last fall. But primarily the focus of this uh, presentation is really on the communications preparations uh, that, uh, that began uh, really when I came on board, uh, the capital campaign communications preparations that began when I came on board about four and a half years ago. Uh, because that groundwork uh, that we laid with our owners around the campaign, uh, messaging the campaign, was at least as important, I think, as the phenomenal work that our capital campaign team uh, 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 did collectively uh, over the, uh, the course of the fall. Uh, and so um, uh, uh, that's what we're going to get into today. So without further ado, we own it. We funded a new lens for messaging the capital campaign uh, to owners. Um, you know, I, I titled this first slide, wait, there's a capital campaign, because uh, that's my quote. Uh, when I went in for my interview with the board uh, a little over four years ago, um, I had joined the, the co-op. I hadn't known anything about co-ops, but I joined the co-op at the farmer's market a few months before, and I had no idea. And so when they said, well, one of the things we really want you to, um, uh, you're really going to have to uh, message at some point is the capital campaign that I, I had no idea that we had to raise one and a half to two million dollars uh, for a capital campaign, we meaning the owners. Um, and so my shock uh, 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 was enough that I think, um, you know, what I said is we, we have to get this out there immediately and we have to make sure it doesn't drop like a bomb, but instead uh, not only lay it at the feet of our owners, but have them warmly embrace it and get excited about it. So um, that's a common challenge, I think, with a lot of co-ops, especially in their infancy, is how do you talk about something that's so far down the road that potentially, as I mentioned here, the challenge is how do you ask folks for a, a $200 share or whatever your share price is, ask them to join the co-op and pay that share and mention casually or in some way uh, that there's a future $2 million owner loan campaign coming down the pipe. Uh, without, you know, not, not that I don't like to look at this as salesy, but without killing the sale, without, um, you know, turning them off, off to becoming an owner. Uh, and the solution uh, that we found over the past several years has been uh, get it out there uh, with campaign messaging that excites people, uh, that helps them understand uh, uh, what this is and that this is normal and that this is a part of the process and that it's actually something that they can get very excited about being part of. Uh, when to start? Well, now. Uh, you know, it, whether you are a co-op uh, that is just incorporating or whether you're a co-op whose capital campaign is potentially coming up in a few months, the time to start is now. Uh, and, and if it's done effectively, uh, you can never start too early. Um, how often? Well, at least twice a week getting that message out there, whether digitally or in person. Hopefully a lot of us are getting back uh, to the farmer's markets this summer safely. Um, but um, uh, and then as the campaign approaches, I'll talk a little bit about the schedule, a capital campaign communication schedule uh, toward the end of the presentation, but it becomes daily. It really becomes something that uh, you want your owners to, in some sense, get sick of to the point where, um, you know, they, they become part of it. Um, 
But uh, to whom? Well, I, I mentioned here to all, not just owners, because if the capital campaign messaging is done right, it's actually uh, it, it can actually be used as a recruitment tool for owners as well, uh, for non-owners as well, rather, to get folks out there who are potential owners to join the co-op because they like the process and, and how this thing is built backward by design. Um, I, I meant I put a little asterisk asterisk there in, in terms of. Um, uh, messaging to non-owners. There are legal limitations based on your state's cooperative law and private offering laws. So make sure uh, that when you're uh, talking about this very early on, that it's general and everything I offer in here is general. Uh, so you don't have to worry about anything in here being, uh, you know, uh, pushing the boundaries of uh, legal limitations when it comes to uh, private offerings of, of loans. Um, but uh, check with your state if you have questions about public messaging around the terms and conditions, the interest rates, that kind of thing. We don't really throw that out there in Massachusetts, but a lot of other co-ops are able to do that. Uh, and, and so if you can, do it. Um, so let me get to the next slide here. I want to go over some core messaging. And so this presentation is going to revolve around uh, four core messages uh, to get owners psyched uh, to become part of this capital campaign. Uh, and the first core message is grow, fund, build. That is establishing the process normalizing the process and uh, for lack of a better word, coolifying the process, right? You want uh, owners and potential owners to understand how co-ops build themselves and to really get that the funding portion of that grow fund build process is, uh, is essential, is integral and, um, uh, and is how co-ops build some of the most sustainable uh, equitable food uh, businesses uh, across the country. So uh, that's that grow, fund, build core message. So we're going to talk about that. We're gonna, also going to talk about our core message number two, our shared values. And not just, uh, you know, um, uh, in an airy, uh, you know, fluffy kind of way talking about our shared values, but deliberately and clearly connecting our capital campaign and the loans that we want to make to the shared values that we already have as a co-op community. You want folks to basically look at that capital campaign and say, oh, I believe in that, so I believe in the capital campaign. Core message number three is proven success. So you want to show uh, your uh, owners and your potential owners that uh, not only is this capital campaign something that we're going to do, but it's something that both startup and established capital campaigns have done and continue to do uh, to build thriving cooperative grocery stores. Uh, so you want to show examples of other co-ops doing it right, uh, having success with it, and we're going to talk about this a little bit, having setbacks as well and working through it. Um, so uh, that's core message number three. And the fourth core message uh, is you want to present this as an investment opportunity because that is what it is. It's not just an opportunity to put your money behind your values. It's not just an opportunity uh, to be part of a really cool, unique process, this grow fund build process that no other businesses do, uh, but many more should. Uh, uh, but it's an, it's an investment opportunity. It's an opportunity to get an interest rate back that's competitive uh, for the most part when it comes to these owner loans. So you want folks at the end of that conversation, whether they sign up as an owner or uh, is a conversation specifically about the campaign to say, here's my email, reach out to me when uh, you're ready uh, to, to reach out to owners for loans. Okay, that first message, grow, fund, build. This is the process, right? This is uh, the special co-op sauce, the sauce by which uh, co-ops are able to build thriving, uh, sustainable businesses that are around for a very long time. Uh, we grow, right? We grow a massive community uh, of more than 1,200, in our case, more than 1,600 now, eager invested owner shoppers uh, who have shared values, who have an incentive to shop at the co-op, and are, who, who are committed to our co-op's mission. Uh, and we do that backward by design, right? This whole thing is backward by design. Typical businesses, they open on a whim, most of them. And it's why only one in three typical small businesses makes it to five years and why co-ops are so much more successful than that. Because we grow our uh, this massive buying base for the co-op before we ever open our doors. And that's, a, that's an integral part of the process. Fund, of course, is our capital campaign, right? We launched capital campaign, excuse me, essentially to match uh, conventional bank financing, which we all also uh, uh, will, uh, will, will get. Uh, and that basically offsets our risk, right? We don't over leverage ourselves to the bank. Uh, it keeps us sustainable until we're profitable, right? So that's a big piece of it too. It further incentivizes owners to shop at the store. 
And it achieves a big part of our mission, which is building a thriving local economy, keeping all of that interest that we would otherwise send to some far off corporate bank headquarters in our community, in our owner's hands, going back to our owners who then spend it back into the community. So that is part of that multiplier effect that's talked about. But that capital campaign is an integral part of this process. And uh, of course, we build a cooperative, a co-op grocery store based on exhaustive market studies to ensure that the precise square footage, costs per square foot, uh, traffic patterns, both foot and car traffic, regional competition and sales forecasts, that all of those are taken into account and uh, give us the best shot at opening a thriving co-op that's around for decades uh, to come and nothing is done on a whim. Uh, it's part of the reason why uh, and I mentioned here at the, at the bottom that we should mention it frequently, the timeline, right? The average timeline had been about five to eight years. Now it's closer to seven to 10 years because of competition, because of cost of occupancy, all that kind of stuff. Um, I mentioned some co-ops here that, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, veered toward that, that longer end of things. Um, so it's a long timeline with big rewards. And it's a process that's worth doing because uh, we would all rather open a cooperative grocery store that is around uh, for the long haul for 30 years or more uh, than open a store that closes a year later. And when, when you explain it that way to owners, they believe in it that way too, and they understand that the funding piece is a part of it as well. Mention the success stats, hammer those stats, right? 70% of food co-ops are still thriving after five years in business compared to just one in three average small businesses. It, it's, it's a ridiculous success rate because of this process, but it's also amazing given the industry that we're in. Cooperatives exist, as you know, across all industry, but in, in, industries, but in this uh, grocery store industry, which is dominated by massive corporations that exert tremendous pressure on private grocers, co-ops are still able to do it uh, and, and have great success rates for the long haul. And as I mentioned, two thirds of established co-ops have been around 30 years or more, uh, and uh, not one uh, food cooperative has, has ever been caught, uh, bought out by a uh, corporation we won't let it happen, right? Uh, and also mention, of course, that these are interest paying loans. As people uh, quite often think, okay, I'm gonna donate to this. Uh, and some co-ops offer a donation offer, uh, option, uh, but for the most part, these are interest paying loans so they can actually get a rate of return. Okay, um, in this grow fund filled process, you wanna be connecting everything that co-ops do, both you and other co-ops are doing to this process. So community building, right? All that is, is the growth part of the process, right? So tablings you're doing, uh, classes you're doing, new owner picks, all of that. It's not just fun and it is fun, at least for me and probably for most of you, uh, but it's also strategic. These also lead to that second central step, which is the capital campaign, uh, the second central step in the process. Other co-ops campaigns, you wanna be talking about them as well in your messaging. That's the fund piece, right? So this normalizes the capital campaign, that it's not just something we're doing. It also counters that kind of in my day response that we often get, because as we know, folks who have been part of co-ops before, especially uh, co-ops that started in the 60s, 70s uh, and 80s, um, often those co-ops started in church basements or uh, um, uh, you know, at, at colleges, that kind of thing. Uh, and they made it by pure grit and uh, determination, but it was a much different market. And even established co-ops these days, the established co-ops that are expanding are using capital campaigns to finance those expansions. It just has to happen uh, because uh, it's, it, you know, it's not enough anymore to, uh, to just uh, try to, uh, uh, you know, pull ourselves up uh, and, and make it happen on our own. We, we need help. It is a, a village effort. Uh, and other co-ops opening and of course uh, established co-ops uh, expanding, that is inspirational. The groundbreakings, the, the design renderings, the classes, the design renderings of other co-ops. You can ask your, co your uh, owners, what do you think of this? You know, and, and you're mentioning the capital campaign as a preempt to that step, to building our co-op uh, in, in the way that we decide our co-op should look and the services we should provide. Tips when it comes to this kind of messaging. Uh, timelines, of course, they show the campaign is integral to the success. Uh, I mentioned, I'll uh, backtrack here for one second. Uh, I showed uh, this timeline here, Grow Fund Build, uh, which has been really helpful for us, uh, but also, uh, you know, more creative. Uh, this is from, um, uh, I forget, we P6ed this from another co-op, but they very graciously allowed us to do that. Uh, but also hammer those stats as you move forward uh, with your uh, Grow Fund Build messaging. These are just some examples 
of how that looks in social media posts. Um, uh, we have here, of course, Sarah has been, uh, she graciously allowed herself to be um, a photographed for the co-op, but she's been kind of, uh, it's just such a great photo, um, uh, kind of the centerpiece whenever we get new owners on board and that kind of thing. But Grow Fund Build, ever heard of it? Uh, this is the startup process prescribed by Food Co-op Initiative. Uh, Sarah joined and she is an integral part of this grow piece of the process. She's owner, blah, blah, blah. Next up is the capital campaign, right? That's call to action. Get, get folks to understand that the capital campaign is coming. Uh, we've uh, quite often cited Fredericksburg Food Co-op, uh, which is a fantastic startup just opened uh, down in Virginia. Uh, we mentioned their uh, success with the capital campaign. They raised more than $4 million total capital campaign, as well as grants and all the rest, uh, owner equity. And we always try to follow this up with we're next owners. Want to be part of this? Email us to, to find out more about the capital campaign. Uh, and if you're not yet an owner, sign up here, that kind of thing. And, you know, we, we love Oshkosh. They're also opening uh, this summer, we believe, uh, out in Wisconsin. And uh, uh, they've done great work uh, on both the capital campaign front, but their build messaging has been fantastic and really inspirational to us. And you can use that to inspire your owners as well to understand this process and understand the capital campaign is essential. You see their sign they put up here uh, and they have their carrot. Uh, they blasted through $1.6 million. That was their goal. So um, the second core message, our campaign, our shared values. Again, this is reminding owners what we're passionate about. And you can't see it there because I think my face is in the way, but connecting uh, uh, those shared values to the capital campaign and the capital campaign to those shared values. The cooperative principles are great, right? If we, uh, everyone on these call has, has drunk the co-op Kool-Aid, uh, but uh, you know, you can mention them. I think they're great ec members, economic participation, autonomy and independence. That's a big, a big seller, um, a big kind of selling point for, for co-ops being independent. But outside of those who are co-op gung-ho, uh, sometimes those don't resonate with, with folks or they're harder to understand than some of the personal values that you, you can kind of glean from your specific co-op community. What's important to your co-op community and how do we make those connections to folk, for folks? So building community is one of those. Uh, local farms and local businesses, supporting them. Food justice is big in a lot of uh, cooperative uh, grocery store communities uh, around equitable access, right? Increasing access to healthy food for all, regardless of income, uh, sourcing from BIPOC farmers and food producers to build a more equitable uh, food economy. And we've talked a lot about the history of black farmers uh, and, and how they have been pushed off their land to the point where at one point in 1920, uh, there were uh, more than a million and now there are fewer than 40,000. So talking about how we, even in our small community can actually, by being conscientious in the way we build our business, uh, help contribute to a more equitable food economy and combat racism uh, in the food system. Caring for the environment, of course, is big across cooperatives. So talking about those values and again, connecting them uh, to the capital campaign and uh, local control, right? Uh, rather than surrendering ourselves to, to the, the crossed fingers mentality, right? Oh man, I hope a big corporation comes in and gives us some good paying jobs. Or I hope a big corporation comes in and, and helps to fluff, off, fluff up our, uh, our tax base in town. We do it ourselves. We don't have to wait. We don't have to have someone else come in and save us. This is about us. And that kind of messaging, that kind of value is very important to a lot of folks. And connecting that to the capital campaign as well, that we can actually be uh, economic partners in our downtown success or in our towns or our cities, uh, economic and cultural success is huge. Uh, I mentioned anti-corporation. You know, I found that when uh, when I've kind of gone middle of the road and softer, a little bit more vanilla in terms of um, whether we talk about corporations and, and, and how we are a, a much different model than that, it doesn't resonate quite as well as when you you are a little bit more blunt about it. So th that's me personally and our community. Um, but, you know, you you weigh it out and decide whether, um, you know, a little bit of anti-corporate value kind of uh, messaging is is worth it when it comes to uh you know, trying to uh, drum up support for their, your capital campaign. And that this is democratic. Of course, we are a democratic uh, institution uh, owned and operated by our, our owners. So um, I, I included some uh, uh, graphics there around, you know, co-op source from on average more than uh, 50 local farms and more than 100 local producers. The multiplier effects about every thousand dollars spent at the co-op, $1,600 to generate in the local economy uh, around, um, 
uh, food waste being recycled, recycling, all that. So all of that is very useful. Our shared values, again, we want to make that connection. And you can be explicit from the day that you start your capital campaign messaging way early on, all the way up to the, the launch of the campaign. And I, I put this quote here because it's, it's really from Ben Sandel, uh, talking about, look, you have lots of choices of where you can invest your money, right? Wall Street is out there. And right now, Wall Street is booming. And you can make great money on Wall Street. Uh, but you're sending your money out of town and you don't know the impact it's having other than on your dollar bottom line, right? But with the co-op, when you're making this investment, when you're making a loan to the co-op, you are going to see your money put to work right here in your own community immediately in terms of driving by the store and seeing local tradespeople, local elect electricians, roofers, and all the rest building your store or renovating your store. When it comes down to opening, right? Local farm trucks pulling up every day, local employees being trained, your neighbors being trained and hired uh, for the co-op with good paying jobs that your loans are helping to fund. When it comes to food justice, right? Uh, increasing access and sourcing from BIPOC producers and programs to support low income uh, neighbors. This here is a picture from the Sacramento Food Club. They have a, a great uh, eight week long uh, cooking on a budget course that's free that they partnered with a local nonprofit to help make it free for folk, fantastic programs like that. Uh, our loans help to fund that. Uh, the environment, of course, reducing our food's carbon footprint by sourcing locally, by building a store or renovating a store and making it as green as possible and green incentives and all that. Local control, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, making that connection between community uh, and the capital campaign. And especially now when so many of us, right, I'm, this, uh, this is a recorded Zoom, but I'm not presenting live to you guys uh, in front of you guys, we need community and we need really good, solid, thick community. Uh, and this is something uh, that we can do with the co-op. Remember the call to actions at the end, whether it's pledges for early investors or loans, you need to remember that at the end of all this messaging around shared values connected to the capital campaign, remember to, remember to make that call to action at the end of your social media posts, the end of your email, the end of your in-person conversation, ask for those pledges, ask for those loans. If it's time, you can't ask for the loans really until you, you launch the campaign, but. Uh, and let the owners sell these values as much as possible because uh, that's who we are, right? It's not, it's, there's no uh, higher corporate structure here dictating stuff, it's the owners. Uh, these are just some examples of posts. Uh, you can look through these a little bit more closely as you uh, go through this uh, presentation, but we've got one about reducing our food's carbon footprint, asking folks to join the co-op or uh, uh, learn more about the capital campaign by emailing us. Uh, telling folks about uh, remembering why our, this was one we did uh, right in the middle of our capital campaign in the midst of our site announcement and a thrilling $2 million capital campaign. It helps to remind ourselves why more than 1,500 owners are working to open the Aspic co-op market. This is about our values. And then talking about our values and, and showing photos and, and real farmers and real people uh, uh, that our loans are helping to support. This is uh, Luke uh, and his daughter out at Abundance Farm uh, in Western Massachusetts. Uh, and on the right is one of many uh, that we've done around uh, building a more equitable food economy. Uh, and uh, this is, um, what is it, John Boyd Jr. He's founder and president of the National Black Farmers Association, talking about the history of discrimination by the USDA against black farmers uh, and talking about uh, the, new, um, uh, the new Justice for Black Farmers Act that just uh, was part of the COVID bill and has uh, now allowed uh, more than $5 billion in loan relief for black farmers. So a big step, long way to go. And by building a community owned grocery store that sources uh, uh, from BIPOC farmers, by increasing access to healthy food for all, we can actually help affect change at a local level. Email us to find out how you can invest in the campaign or email us uh, or uh, join the co-op uh, here and, and help us make an impact. So that's those are ways to do it. These are just some more. I, I hesitate because I'm not sure exactly how long yeah, I'm probably stretching on here, but uh, we've got examples here. That's actually me and my wife, uh, but uh, we've got examples here of uh, owners uh, talking about why they joined or why they invested, uh, the impact on local businesses, the impact on local charities, the picture from Littleton Co-op and all of those roundup at the register programs that folks are doing, that co-ops are doing. Uh, those are a great way to showcase why our business is worth investing in, why our co-op community is worth putting our money uh, into uh, so that we get a return that's not just a uh, bottom line, but is, uh, is, is meaningful on many levels. 
proven success, core message number three, and this is co-ops doing it right, right? You need to be sharing fellow co-op successes, startups and established, and connect those successes to the campaign. So it's easy to do that when it comes to sharing uh, uh, messaging that's out there from other co-ops and photos about, um, about the cap their capital campaign success itself, and you should do that. So campaign progress is a piece of that, but also location announcements, store renderings, uh, ground breakings, GM hirings, uh, grand openings, of course, uh, congratulate them and quite often congratulate is a, a kind of an algorithm uh, marker for uh, Facebook and it can actually boost your post. So con congratulate them and then make the pivot. Ask the co-op market or whatever your co-op owners, we are next, right? And, and talk about that. Talk about their timelines, talk about their owner numbers and uh, talk about the capital campaign as an integral part of their success as it, and, and, and uh, in turn an integral part of our own success. And we also offer, you know, what will our co-op look like kind of thing and, and giving inside looks into stores. What kind of features would you like to see? Uh, you know, as a capital campaign investor, we actually uh, have an impact on the kinds of features and what our store uh, looks like, the kind of programming it has and all that. So you wanna be connecting these things all the way. And this is Hunger Mountain, who co-op in the bottom right and the center. Uh, and this is Urban Greens, which just opened in Providence, Rhode Island last, last summer, maybe last spring. Um, and this is one of my favorite photos in the upper right. I use this a lot. Uh, this is River Valley Market in Northampton, uh, Massachusetts, one of the most successful startups in the country. I'll tell you why I use them, uh, not just because of how successful they are, but because of the gauntlet they ran through to get to uh, uh, success. Uh, but this is obviously, you know, that really shows it literally that this is a village lifting up the roof of the co-op. Um, uh, these are some examples. Uh, congratulations to the Bethlehem Co-op. Co We're next, hopefully, uh, uh, hiring the GM down at Fredericksburg. Their capital campaign is nearly complete. You know, kudos to them. How inspiring for us owners. Have you heard about the, our capital campaign? If not, email us to find out information. And on the right, uh, this is a clip from an email we sent a while ago when our first site fell through uh, to talk about uh, the, uh, the setbacks and normalize the bumps in the road that are inevitable in all co-ops uh, opening process, whether it's the capital campaign, the site search, the growth lulls, right, that happen in owner numbers that you're looking at, you need to normalize that. And, and, and uh, River Valley, of course, 10 years to open, two sites falling through like us, uh, and uh, they located on the outskirts of town. And so some folks were concerned about whether it would uh, be a success five minutes away from a big shopping co complex with a Walmart and a super stop and shop. And yet uh, within five years, they were generating $20 million in annual sales, 7,000 owners, and now they're opening a second store. Uh, they just completed a, a $5 million capital campaign to open a second store in nearby East Hampton. They've been so successful. So uh, really inspiring to see uh, how this process works for people. And yeah, use Google News and Facebook news feed, subscribe to other co-ops uh, to learn about other co-op openings and classes and impacting uh, charities and, and that kind of thing. So you can, you can share them and, and inspire. Uh, the core message number four, that this is an investment opportunity, right? Uh, and you need to gather, excite, and, and share early investors way early on, right? So we started this process uh, several, I started the messaging right when I came on board when we were around 600 owners. We are now, and it could have been started at the very start. And, and if you're before that, you should. Um, but, um, uh, but the early investors, we actually started taking those on uh, and, and talking about them and starting a list way back around 600 owners. Uh, and certainly once we were near announcing our first uh, uh, site that we thought we uh, were going to uh, occupy, uh, it's time to, to develop that list. Uh, what's the opportunity? Of course, interest paying loans and returns on average higher than bank accounts. And you can talk about, you can figure out with your board and that kind of thing, whether you can talk about that level of some stage you can, some stage you can't. Uh, but becoming an economic partner in our community success. Uh, the opportunity is also investing in our shared values, as I mentioned, seeing the impact in real time on real people in our community and feeling good, right? People want to feel good about their investments. And at the very least, people don't want to feel bad about their investments. Uh, especially folks who tend to gravitate toward cooperatives want to make sure that um, the ways that they're uh, investing their their time, their money, and all the rest, their emotions are toward 
uh, positive aims. And that is what we are. We are a force for good in the community. And that you can use that kind of terminology when you're talking about the opportunity here with the campaign. Beyond social media and the email, right? Uh, beyond uh, the farmer's markets messaging, the signage and all of that, where this messaging is happening, you want to be holding events around the capital campaign. So the first one, the first official one we uh, held was uh, op an open the co-op uh, volunteer rally. And it was an opportunity for folks to, yes, volunteer for the upcoming capital campaign, but really learn about that capital campaign and sign up to be contacted when it happens. Uh, and we got more than 30 uh, owners to sign up at that one event. Maybe it was one or two events around that. Uh, but by the time we launched, we had, uh, or were ready to launch, uh, and we're looking at and had all of our, our legal paperwork done, uh, we had more than 30 folks who we knew wanted to be part of this campaign. And the outreach began then, and I'll talk about that. Uh, but virtual or otherwise, at this point, make those opportunities available to owners to learn about the campaign as an investment opportunity, to start that early investment list, and to start building your list of campaign volunteers. Uh, get those pledges, even without specific amounts. And you'll see here at the bottom, capture the names. It's essential for the silent phase, or even if you don't do a silent phase for the launch, uh, we did a silent phase. I'll talk about that in a little bit. It got us very quickly, that initial list of 30 uh, early investors, folks who wanted to be part of this, didn't know the details about it, but knew that they had a little bit of money or a lot of money and wanted to be part of this uh, uh, capital campaign. That got us right out the bat within a couple of weeks of the silent phase, we, the silent phase was about four weeks for us, $250,000 underfoot. And by the time we launched the campaign officially, we had $400,000 in investor pledges underfoot of our $2 million goal. So we had a quarter of the money raised right out the bat and it was tremendously inspiring and uh, momentum building uh, for our campaign. Uh, and it was, it was a great suggestion from Ben Sandell to do, uh, but we had already done a lot of that legwork in building that early investor list early on. You can talk with folks about the unique opportunity, but this part right here that I'm presenting to you here is actually about owner testimonials, investor testimonials. And um, don't leave it up to when you're asking folks for uh, invest, folks who have decided they want to invest, when you're asking them about uh, potentially offering us a testimonial and a pick, you can suggest to them the topics that we're trying to get testimonials around. These were the, the list of topics that we made. Again, those might differ for your community and ask if they can provide about 60 words around those. You can provide an example from another investor testimonial uh, that you have, <coughs> but really make sure that you have all of your values covered, all of these particular uh, topics, themes covered, uh, and, and to ask folks if they'd be willing to provide one around those, give them some options and, and they'll pick one. Uh, and that's great. Um, so that's what we did there. Uh, we also developed some uh, great, um, uh, one of our board members is great uh, with uh, graphic design. I am not, I'm a messaging person. Uh, that's why I've always needed uh, graphics folks uh, with me on the team. Uh, but we came up with some great, uh, these are part of our initial mailers uh, that we mailed out with the capital campaign. Uh, great ways to make uh, folks understand that those loans are real uh, and that they have a real tangible impact. Think about being an investor because many of us will be on some level, whether big or small, uh, and think about walking into their store and joking with your significant other or your friends or whomever, or just thinking to yourself as you walk through and you see a grocery display case and you think, oh, I paid for about a quarter of that. A quarter of this is mine, right? That ownership piece is big when it comes to the co-op, of course, but it's also really important when it comes to the capital campaign. So we developed this, what will our investments do uh, graphic this is a two-sided graphic. The other side are testimonials from owners who early investors. Uh, but you know, we just did a little bit of research to find out. Okay, what what does a, a POS station cost? About well, fifteen grand each. Um, what about a twelve-foot bulk dispenser? That's about thirteen thousand dollars, right? What about shopping carts? I, maybe I can only invest the minimum uh, loan amount. What what can my investment do? Shopping carts, a hundred dollars each. Oh, great. Well, a two thousand dollar investment. I own two, 20 of these uh, shopping carts. Great, right? So these are ways that you get in fun ways, but tangible ways people, especially when they're uh, investing money, they will like to see, especially when the store isn't open yet, uh, what, uh, what is going to be the tangible uh, return that they see when they come into their store. We've got the values, we've got the interest rate return, we've got the community, we've got all of that, right? But what's the tangible when they walk in? 
Uh, as the campaign approaches, this is closer to the actual campaign launches. You've got your site in hand. You're ready to launch a campaign. Uh, make a communication schedule and don't shy away. Use FCIs if you can. Use Food Co-op Initiatives workbook, their capital campaign workbook. It's Appendix, a Appendix S. Uh, and I just clipped a piece of it here. It's hard to see in this format, but it's essentially an Excel uh, spreadsheet recommendation where you get to basically plan out your communication schedule uh, for three months to campaign kickoff, two months to campaign kickoff, broken down by weeks, one month, then campaign kicks off, you know, the month after campaign, the month after that, uh, and then how you wrap it. And, and then you get to kind of, or I ordered it, you know, in descent, you know, from top to bottom. How does the core messaging kind of get tweaked as you go along around the site development and the site being built um, around your uh, capital campaign experiencing progress, uh, all that kind of stuff. And it allows you to break it down. I, I broke it down at the top core messaging and then what I, how that looks on social media, website, email, newsletters, press releases, uh, events, uh, building the communications team, all of that kind of stuff. So you can see all this as you go through it. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the silent phase we did uh, about six weeks out, I have there. Um, these are private emails and phone calls to 20 to 40 early investors talking about them on social media if they're willing. Uh, and the press release, press outreach begins at that point as well. Um, and we found that silent phase was really helpful for us. And it was kind of a fun way for callers, I'll get to the uh, campaign team here in a second, callers to, um, uh, to kind of, um, uh, I don't know. It's to kind of get some practice in. Um, so, and one month out, it's NPR style. If you're a listener to NPR, uh, it's to the point where they don't want to hear it anymore. And so they just invest or they, you know, tune it out. And that's fine too, because if they're part of the co op, they know how important this is, especially if we've done the messaging work right. Uh, building a dynamite campaign team, just briefly here, this is, was our campaign team, still is because we have half a million dollars to go on that capital campaign once we actually uh, secure our final site and we're making great progress. Uh, capital campaign committee, uh, promote the recruitment of the campaign team, promote the meetings, uh, promote the calls that you're making, uh, talk about you might be getting a call from the, one of these smiling faces, uh, promote the team members if they're willing. This is, you know, uh, Greg, he's from Acton, he loves, uh, he's really looking forward to this at the co-op, that kind of thing. And of course, promote the milestones. In terms of numbers and what you might need for your campaign team, uh, at the time we launched our campaign officially, we had about 1,500 owners and 12 callers, and that was about right. So you can kind of measure based on that. Have a campaign coordinator if you can afford it. Uh, Patty, who is right there with her thumb up, uh, was fantastic for us, really keeping us all on track um, and, uh, and, and getting us pumped and a great cheerleader and a great accounting uh, person. Uh, for uh, all of those monies that are coming in beyond the board's accounting. Uh, she was fantastic. And um, what else was I going to say uh, with regard to uh, Patty? Oh, uh, we used um, uh, HubSpot uh, for our, and some co-ops just use Excel or Google, and we found HubSpot really useful. So look into it if you'd like to. It was really helpful for us for tracking everything and um, all that kind of stuff. And each of us seeing our own progress of the campaign. So really trying to up our own uh, last mark that we made. Uh, have roles, of course, those roles are right there. Read FCI's capital campaign workbook. I, I say that. Uh, and I, uh, in college, was the kind who read enough of the nights, the previous night's reading and came up with a few good things to say so that it could look as if I'd read the whole thing and was really engaged, uh, even if I wasn't. So on that note, read what's really important and what you think would be really useful. I will say the whole thing is useful and I wish I had read the whole thing and I will probably continue to read more of it, but I really looked through it to see what are really the highlights here and what is the most impactful uh, uh, tips and strategies for making this successful as a campaign team. Uh, schedule trainings and silent phase launch around that site announcement. Uh, and our uh, silent phase are the owners, the folks we reached out to it's about exclusivity, right? So they had a glimpse of the potential site before we announced it to others. And we told them, please keep it under wraps. Uh, it, th this is not public yet. It will be in a few weeks, but because you've expressed interest, early interest in being an early investor, we want you to know, and we think you should know. Uh, get that team to commit to investing too, if they can, obviously it's not, it doesn't work for everyone, um, but it helps a lot if when you're making a call and someone asks, are you uh, investing? It helps if you're able to say, yes, I am. Or even if you can't, 
to say, oh, I'm not actually, but the entire board and so many owners are really behind this. And if you can't make it work, that's fine. About one in four or one in five owners on average invest. It's enough to be a, a, a co-op owner and just shop at the co-op. You're still supporting the co-op, but we would really appreciate your support with this campaign because it, it's integral to our success. Uh, share team meeting picks, bounce, bounce messaging off of them. I did that with them because they're all owners and they helped me understand what kind of capital campaign messaging was really working and what wasn't working as well. Some frequently asked questions because I don't have you to ask me. I wish I did, but here's some. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which do we use and how often? Um, definitely the first two, Facebook and Instagram. And especially if you're able to get out there in the community. I mean, it's a little harder with Instagram when you're stuck behind a computer, right? Uh, but if you're able to get out there in the community and uh, show your town on Instagram and show the potential site or the actual site on Instagram and um, show the farmers and that kind of thing that you're going to impact and um, all that kind of stuff. Definitely the first two, Facebook and Instagram. Facebook trends a little older these days. I say that because I'm still on Facebook um, and I am getting a little older. Uh, and that's typically where the bigger funds are, but not always. Um, Twitter, I personally have just uh, shied away from it just because I, I've, I, 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 it's, not, it's not my bag. And I found that we've been able to do good work around the campaign and owner growth and um, site development messaging, all that kind of stuff without it so but you know use it if, if you need to and if you feel it's effective can this be done virtually the campaign and the campaign messaging absolutely um uh but because we are all so virtual right now and hopefully moving back out into the community but because there's so much virtual stuff messaging that moves people that connects people as a community uh that connects people to the values so funding messaging capital campaign messaging that that is values oriented and community oriented is much more important right now it's always been important but even more so now uh, and community building with virtual events and open q a sessions around the campaign um that's very important now too uh, what was the silent phase about i i uh i talked a little bit about this anyway but the informally, it started a couple of years earlier when we were starting to gather uh, names uh, for the early investor list. Officially, that silent phase started four or six weeks before we launched. They got a sneak peek at the location and the prospectus, and they got dibs on early pledges. Um, and, and that was, it's really, again, about exclusivity. Uh, we built a solid foundation for launch day. Was the silent phase really silent? In terms of outreach explicitly to solicit loans, yes. Uh, it kind of had to be um, legally in our state. Um, and it was legal to do it, but you know, in, in terms of sharing the message publicly, especially because we hadn't shared our site yet, we had to keep it quiet. Um, but one, but uh, once everything is legal, meaning once the, once the paperwork was ready and you launched that cap, the silent phase of the capital campaign, you can actually talk about the silent phase to kind of tease out investors, both on social media and in private communications. But in terms of explicitly soliciting and asking folks for loans. Uh, that really uh, we didn't do until uh, uh, publicly until the the uh, campaign officially launched. We did it privately with this silent folks who had expressed interest early on, but publicly we didn't ask for those loans until until we officially launched the campaign. Are the values flexible? Absolutely. Your community's priorities should inform the values that you highlight as an investment tool. Um, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it depends upon what's important to your community, co-op community, your owners. Uh, and your co-op. So um, any last tips or pointers? Help your owners see what's coming uh, because a process this long demands inspiration and renewed inspiration regularly. One of the, and I'll do this last with you guys. One of the things that I uh, do with my uh, owners, uh, you know, at various intervals, right? A few times a year uh, is I help them with an, a visioning exercise and I, I on social media and email uh, in person. Here's, here's the visioning exercise that I do. We've been at this for so long, right? It, it can seem like such a, you know, stake being moved out kind of thing. But here's what I picture, right? The pandemic is, is, is done, right? It's a beautiful summer day. Uh, it's grand opening day, right? And outside of our co-op, our beautiful building, renovated or new, uh, are 500 or 1,000 of our owners gathered, along with local farmers and local politicians uh, and, and, fish, and town leaders and all the rest. Uh, and we're all there with our families and hopefully we don't have masks on. Uh, and, um, and we're all gathered and they're holding that big red ribbon and the sun is shining down and they count down and hundreds of people count down together, hundreds of owners. And we snip that big red ribbon and we rush in and grab our grocery carts and go up and down the aisles and we're smiling and we're high-fiving and this is our store. 
this is what's coming. And this is something that we can do informally and formally around messaging, both for the capital campaign, but just generally, uh, we need to continue to inspire folks because what we're doing is inspiring. So we are inspired, we are committed, and we will do this. You will do this, and um, we're all rooting for each other. And so uh, thank you guys very much uh, for being part of this presentation. Again, if you have questions, you can email me, L-O-R-N-E at aspitmarket.coop. Uh, and uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and um, you can head to our website if you want to see some of that capital campaign messaging and owner recruitment messaging in action and keep track of us and share our stuff. And we love sharing your stuff. So um, thank you again so much. Uh, uh, good luck to all of you in opening your co-ops. We're going to do this and we're going to do it together and it's going to be awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.